I was contacted and was told that eight judges up in northeast Mississippi uh, from Lee County all the way to Shemingo and in between there's a bunch of them but uh, eight of them had signed this uh, out of their courthouse out of all of them but anyways y'all this is all the papers we've been working on for the last two days oh I'm sorry. Is that better? I'm sorry. I wasn't loud enough. Yeah, that was surprising. Huh? See, I was waiting on my husband to say it, but you did. Okay. Um, but anyways, they signed this order, and it was signed. It went into effect January 1st, 2019. Well, Kelly Mims is a new judge. There are four new judges out of these eight. Um, I know Kelly Mims because when I was campaigning in North Mississippi for Chris last year he was at a lot of the events we had to hit every festival and everything so i crossed over with him so i got to know him and i know he's a good man and he's veteran and everything and he's he was pro 2a and he wanted to uphold the law and i, I believed him and usually when you work with politicians and elected officials long enough you know when they're lying to you but i just didn't feel it well then i heard that he signed this and i was like what so I contacted him on my own, behind the scenes, because I was trying to keep out of this <clears throat> on the front end. But, and we talked a good bit Saturday night through Messenger, and then Sunday morning, Rick Ward tagged me in a post. And so therefore, me staying completely behind the scenes was off the table. Because then people started texting and calling and messaging and everything else wanting to know what was going on. Because if this happens here and it's allowed to continue, it could come to central Mississippi or other parts of the state. So we got to looking into it. This is the order. Basically what these eight judges did on the advice and the resolution that was put forward by the two senior judges for Chancery Court and Circuit Court. Um, they declared the whole courthouse their courtrooms. So not to be offensive, but the way it was described to me by people that were involved before I got all the paperwork was like they set up their own little kingdoms. And so like they didn't want anybody with the enhanced carry and of law-abiding citizens to be able to come inside the courthouse with their weapons. Well, guys, in the last 15 years, there's only been 10 courthouse killings or attacks, and five of those were fires and bombs, and five of them were with a firearm. Not one was from a firearm outside of the courthouse It was or courtroom. It was from a firearm inside of the courtroom taken off of a deputy. So that's, that's the deal. And had their... We play devil's advocate because what stops a bad guy with a gun? A good guy with a gun. So, and that's the whole point, you know, and we know that the judges need to be safe, but to declare your whole courthouse, hallways, and everything in X number of feet out to the grass just about, the courtroom is, is, is not right. The Mississippi Supreme Court, they tried this back in 2011, and Supreme Court, Rick Ward took it to the Supreme Court, they ruled on it and said the courtroom ends at the doors, which was a bit harsh because you do have chambers and you have witness area protection areas and stuff that you know you, you, this is a safety issue so anyways legislator we put forward wait i say wait anyways they uh put forward this bill it's house bill 1581 is now passed the house and the senate and what it does is define exactly for the judges exactly where their courtroom is and is not and basically and it reinstitutes that enhanced carry have the right to carry in the courthouses and um anyways judges this is what is a courtroom now. Judge's chamber, witness room, and jury room. That's it. Not the stairs, not the hallway, not the waiting areas, not anywhere else. So this blew up this weekend. And Sunday, I was about, it was crazy. And phone was going off. So I talked to Kelly, Judge Mims. I call him Kelly because we're friends. But I talked to him, and he was taking some very big hits. But anyways, um... I was like, what are you doing? Why did you sign this? And he was like, well, they told me this. And so we talked about it and got with Rick. Rick had tagged me in. So I called him after church and lunch Sunday. And he, he and I educated and, and helped with, which they know it, but they see so much. And, and sometimes if you give an inch, they take a mile. I mean, that's just honest truth. You have to keep people honest sometimes. But we educated on that. And then code 97377.7 about the courthouse and the rulings and the opinions of some of the Supreme Court justices that wanted to say their opinions, which all lined up with what we were saying. Plus this bill that passed and that will go, is being signed by Governor Bryant tomorrow or the next day. It'll go into effect 1st of July, I think. 
Anyway, so they can't do this without it being July 1st. I was right. 2019. So this is a big win because let me tell you what happened. It started with Kelly and everybody, it was bad. It was bad. I mean, what he did, what they did was not right. It was completely unconstitutional and against our rights. But he was willing to talk and he was like, you know what? I, I made a mistake. I just did. And I'm going, I want to fix this and I want to do the right thing because I never want to mess up people's rights. I want to uphold the Constitution. And, and he's got a good heart and he meant it. Well, that was yesterday evening. And then by last night, he had messaged me or text, whatever, and said that he, two of them, right? I'm asking Bobby. Two of them had decided, him and another one had decided that uh, they were rescinding their names on this, on this uh, order. And so by this morning, he texted me about nine and he said, I'm doing good today. I've got four now. That are willing to rescind and um because i just told him yesterday and not that he was bucking about it he was like this is gonna be so bad i said not as bad as if we don't do the right thing and so i just told him i said you know all it takes is one man or one woman to do the right thing stand firm lead the charge and make a difference and so and he did and then by the time we got on the conference call it was me and him and rick today at 10 um he had six six of them and he was almost convinced he couldn't get but four of them, but he did end up getting six. And so then after the conference call, uh, about an hour and a half later, he contacted me and said, look, the other two that I told you were gonna be an issue because they're senior judges and they've been in forever. And um, he said, they wanna meet and they haven't agreed to resend. The other ones have already put the orders in with their courts, like today, that was done. And he said, but they wanna meet with us at four on th Friday to talk about rescinding the whole order, like completely saying, Oop, we're gonna take that out. We shouldn't have done that. So y'all, that's just, that was a lot of work. And for him to, he went after those judges and he educated them based off of what we were telling him and, and trying to share with them. And I don't know, today was a win. It was a, it was a good win. It was good for liberty as well as for the second amendment. And I don't know, just to show that people can still stand up and do the right thing. It's nice to see, it's refreshing. So I'm very thankful for Rick Ward because he holds people's feet to the fire. And he called me the mediator today. Y'all, that's funny if you know me real well. But I was the mediator in this one, I promise. Um, but it was good. And I'm glad God just brought this situation together and he knew what to do because the ones he had in play here were great. And um, so I'm very thankful for that. And I'm glad to report that our Second Amendment rights are not being infringed upon in Northeast Mississippi anymore. And so hopefully by Friday we'll have the complete update and we're hopeful, but we're not 100% positive because the other two, I told you, are the seniors and they're, they're a little bit more difficult. But with him to flip that many in just this little bit of period, I think it's good. I feel good about it. Do y'all have any questions? I know that was quick, and I, the bill is seven pages long. Y'all don't want me to bore you with that. And then the order is three pages long. It just basically said the whole courthouse is now ours, courtroom. And so they can't do that. So. Um, Anything else? This the bill that it did pass that the governor is going to sign will just reaffirm what the Supreme Court said, but it it gives them a little more leeway with the chambers and the witness areas. And that's it on that. Y'all have any questions? Thank y'all. Thank you. Okay.